So how do we achieve student-centric values at education? There are three areas that we'll, we'll work on. First, enabling all students to succeed. Second, empowering schools and educators to do the best of each child, to have a school-based teacher-led excellence. And third, working with parents and the community in an enhancing partnership. Let me say a few words on each area. Now, the theme of this year's Work Plan Seminar is our children, our, our future. And our children must remain the focus of all we do in education. But how do we instill values and develop character in our students? I think in our schools, we see many interesting work that, that is going on. And it is not easy. As one British uh, writer also recently commented, and I quote, The next slide. Yeah. It is easy to agree about the importance of teaching citizenship and values, but we have struggled to develop the language to discuss. There are no GCSEs in values or a league table for citizenship. But between academic achievements and values, it must not be either or. And we must strive to achieve both. So for us, I think we have a strong foundation and we must continue to build on it. But ultimately, it will be difficult to try and construct a league table, nor would it be desirable. Ultimately, it must come from the conviction and wisdom of our educators. So the first thing we must do is to reaffirm the central place of values and character development in our education system. Our school leaders and teachers must demonstrate commitments to this. For instance, periods set aside for civics and moral education, national education and so on, must not make way for remedial lessons for examinable subjects. We must set clear expectations that leaders must uphold. Second, by creating the context in our classrooms and in co-curricular co activities to develop values and character. Every school has its motto and values. Many of our schools have made these values alive and have developed innovative and whole school approaches in character development. Classroom lessons can raise awareness and knowledge of values, but these are not enough. As many of our educators have pointed out to me, values are not just taught, they are often caught. It is experiences, especially those that are demanding and challenging, that build character and enable students to develop the feelings for and act on their values through real life experiences in various contexts. Now, one important context outside of the classroom has been CCAs. CCAs are an integral part of our education to build character and to provide holistic education. We must re-emphasize re that the intent of CCAs is not to win matters per se, but to learn the value of excellence, teamwork, and discipline, to be gracious in victory and resilience in defeat. To support school leaders, we will work with schools to review our current LEAPS, or Leadership Enrichment Achievement Participation and Service, uh, the LEAPS grading framework, to give due recognition to the key learning outcomes and to rebalance the recognition from achievement to holistic and balanced participation. We should increase our capacity to enable students to participate in recreational sports and other activities. Third, we will enhance our national framework. Nationally, we have had civics and moral education that built on the earlier Good Citizen series. I've been very astounded at the number of people of my age who, whom I've met, whether it's teachers or parents, who keep asking us to bring back a good, uh, the good citizen of Hao Kong Ming. Uh, my, so I, I had a very thorough look at our civics and moral education, and I do think that our new CME syllabus uh, is quite comprehensive. Now, I think where the gap might maybe is that you know, we all grow up with a certain set of textbooks and so on, and we're so familiar with it, and when we don't see our children reading the same textbook, 
we say, oh, schools are not doing it. So I think we need to reach out to, to parents. So in our 21st century competencies framework, the rich values of respect, resilience, responsibility, integrity, care and harmony form the core. Now let me add that these are not MOE values, but these are our shared national values. With this as the core, educators and parents can build on it to introduce others, such as courage, loyalty, humility, to create distinctive ethos for the school. Now, MOE has brought together the various initiatives in national education, co-curricular activities, civics and moral education, under a character and citizenship education framework. Next year, MOE will have a new CCE branch. MOE will also work with schools to co-create a new and coherent CCE curriculum comprising of core national ones complemented by school-initiated programs. And MOE will develop a CCE toolkit for schools to co-create programs that best meet the needs of their students. Schools can also explore how to better infuse education in the mother tongue languages and literature lessons and to make NE come alive. NE will remain a cornerstone of our CCE curriculum because our children must know Singapore's vulnerabilities and constraints as well as what makes Singapore tick. Now, in many of the schools I've visited, I've seen very lively work on this area, and so I'm confident that school leaders will devote sufficient time to CCE and to create authentic learning experiences for our students. So in short, we must make values and character development systematic and pervasive. Now, to support holistic education, parents, especially those with primary school children, will have noticed a change in the report books that their children will bring home. Unlike the black and red marks of yore, these reports, which we term as holistic development profiles, will now provide, now provide richer and more qualitative feedback on their children's development. This is being rolled out in primary schools and will be helpful for our parents to better understand their own child and work with schools to chart their child's learning journeys. Now, the components that make up student-centric holistic education reinforce each other in complex, multifaceted ways. But at its core, it recognizes that students differ in their strengths and abilities, in their styles of learning, and in their interests and aspirations. As many of you have shared with me, for some students, we need the extra effort to work with their parents to motivate them. For others, we have to encourage them not to be too demanding on themselves. Some are exceptionally gifted in particular areas, whether it's in mathematics or science, or the sciences or humanities, or in the arts, music or sports. Some learn best in academic settings, others through hands-on experiences. Some have special needs in our mainstream school, as when they have dyslexia or ADHD, some have to be in special schools that cater to their needs better. And I recently visited Pathlight and saw the work that they have done and also the St. Andrews School. So these are important ways of meeting the needs of a very diverse student profile. Some of our students blossom early. Others are late developers. But every student has one or more areas of specific comparative strength and interests. These are peaks within the individual that can be developed. And a very, you know, many of you have shared with me your joy as educators when you succeed in finding the spark and connecting with the students. We rejoice each time our students succeed, whether it is in achieving excellence on the world stage, be it in the debates or the Olympiads. And this year, you know, it's quite remarkable that for a very small country, we are topped in the Mathematics Olympiads. We celebrate and rejoice when you see our students overcome adverse circumstances and finding success, like Li Chuan Chie and Tiu Chi Wei. Both were recipients of the Li Xianlong Award for Special Achievement, 
given to one outstanding student each from North Light School and Assumption Pathway School. So if we look at our ed education system, the system has recognised diverse and complex needs and evolved multiple pathways for success. So the next crucial step in our education journey is to promote student-centric education, not just at the system level, but to empower our schools and teachers to deliver this. I'm confident that this can be done. In fact, many schools have been customising their programmes to meet the needs of their students. For example, at North, at North Brook Secondary, the SAW, or the Special Pull Out and Academic Recovery Programme, reaches out to at-risk students who have learning difficulties. So through authentic learning experiences, such as motorcycle repair, these students gain greater motivation and confidence. And they also acquire desirable values and relevant skills.